Yes, my sweatshirt is orange. <laughs> and beautiful. Thank you. All right. It's a short, short story called, well, I won't tell you what the title is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hair in my cereal. <laughs> is there anything more disgusting? Wait a second, there is. When you don't see the hair in the cereal, <laughs> shovel a spoonful into your mouth and then feel the hair wrap around your teeth with milk and oats splashing around. Now that is disgusting. This happened to me once, actually. I was on my second week at Loopy and Sons Insurance, where I was a clerk. Halfway through my Fruity Pebbles lunch, I felt a damn hair, without even thinking, spit my mouthful onto the break room table. It was a gag reflex of some sort. Of course, you know what happens next. You slowly and delicately glide your tongue around your mouth, checking to see if the reason for making, your, for making you contort your face in the most gruesome of ways is still present. It's like a horror show is taking place in front of your teeth in the tonsils of the projectionist. Is the killer behind that door? Is the hair wrapped around that molar? And then, just like you know the girl shouldn't walk into the barn all alone, you move your tongue to the point of original sensation, and bam! You feel the wiry hair still there. But now there's milk dripping down your, your mouth. I just lost my foot. Now there's milk dripping down your mouth. And clumps of cereal decorating your table. You pucker your lips and start spitting saliva in the air while reaching with ten fingers, grasping for something to pull out. Well, that was me at Loopy and Sons on my seventh day, in front of Mr. Loopy's wife, no less. She pulled a handkerchief from her dress pocket, covered her mouth, and shrunk into her seat with one hand stretched out as if she was back in Mr. Loopy's Dodge Charger watching the giant spider evasion at the drive -in. My skinny fingers finally found the goddamn hair, but then came what might be the worst part, pulling it out with your eyes focused on the tip of your nose. Because then you come face to face with the assailant. You're able to see what kind of hair it really is. Is it black, blonde, or red? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Short, medium, or long? Curly, wavy, or straight? In other words, is it yours or someone else's? <laughs> I get chills just thinking about it. So then I pulled it out. Now, I have short, crew-cut blonde hair. Mrs. Luby has long, curly, black hair. By the time my fingers had made it past my nose to the point where I could clearly see them, I knew the strand of hair still connected to my teeth was hers. Yeah, it could have been blonde or red, but the way she slowly slid the handkerchief down her face, eyes widening and all, I just knew. Then something even stranger happened. She jumped up, ran at me, slapped down my forehead with her palm and yanked the hair from my grill. I would have kept on spinning, you know, on account of the hair that was just in my mouth. I mean, I could still taste the chemicals on it. But I couldn't, because the, woman's who, the woman whose hair it belonged was still standing there. It would have been an ungentlemanly thing for me to do, not to mention the fact she was my boss's wife, and I didn't want to offend no one. But in hindsight, that little act of not spitting, looking stoic in my mode of contempt, might have been the trigger. For Mrs. Loopy ripped down her top of her dress, exposing her more than ample bosom, and with her ton love, tan love handle spilling over, she rather aggressively shimmied down her panties and climbed on top of me. <laughs> As her squat frame engulfed me under those fluorescent lights, I saw the hairiest armpits as the days I showered with my granddaddy Harold. <laughs> I reckon Mr. Loopy hadn't either, because when he walked into the break room for his tuna melt, he looked more disgusted than upset. Now, I ain't got no quarrel with women growing hair there. I know that feminist movement is picking up steam. Hell, I'd shovel the coal if they asked. But no woman, man, or child should have hairier anything than my granddaddy Harold. <laughs> Man survived the Great Depression eating nothing but squirrel and cold coffee mixed with dirt. <laughs> now where was I? <laughs> oh yeah, there's a hair in my cereal. <laughs> today. Did I mention today was the first day of the rest of my life? Having a hair in the cereal can't be too good of a sign for the first day of anything. But today is the start of something new and successful. Before now, I... Before now, I don't feel as if I've reached my potential, you know? And honest to God, I want to. I really do. Things just keep coming up, is all. I've had five jobs since that fateful day I tasted Mrs. Loopy's musk. I was a membership... <laughs> I was a membership coordinator at a senior center, shift manager at a Bojangles, inventory clerk at an auto shop, 
hearing aid salesman, and then they call a waste management consultant, though saying that did not yield me any more dates than when I said garbage collector. If you found a hair in your food at that job, well, you'd be adding to the trash pile. But for one reason or another, none of them jobs worked out. Before, besides Loopy and Sons Insurance, sex only played a part in my demise at Bojangles. Brenda and I would work up such an appetite, we'd pig out on some chicken and fries, which apparently was a big no-no there, eating company food that is. Good old Brenda, but was like a fresh, but was like a pillow fresh out of the plastic. <laughs> Every time I saw it, I wanted to smack it to see it fluff up. <laughs> she had dreams of going to community school and becoming a hairdresser. Don't know what happened to her. Once there was no seasoning salt or biscuits between us, the grease fire went out. <laughs> I never did find out they knew I was dipping my Cajun chicken tender in her honey mustard sauce. <laughs> but that's, ne that's neither here nor there. I sure as hell ain't gonna blame the horizontal mambo for my lack of production or success. Hell, all the idiot bosses I had are as much to blame as me. No one ever wanted to hear my side of the story. Why would I berate old Mrs. Sanderson until she broke down in tears? She had dementia, for Christ's sakes. And believe me, I love a good off-color joke just like anyone else. I don't litter my everyday conversations with them. I know better. But that's why, that's why we have today with a capital T. For whenever you have today with a capital T, you got hope. Ignore all your past firings and grasp today, like this hair in my hands, and make something of it. Like right now, I gotta hear the funnies. I'll read me some peanuts, some Doonesberry for the intellectual humor. It can only help. And then onto the want ads. And if that gets me down, I always got the obituaries. Because the one thing that separates us from them is we got tomorrow with a capital T. And tomorrow can always be the first day of the rest of your life. Thank you. <laughs>